Mr. Speaker, thank you. Um, this report brings out a lot of, again, undesirable elements. Um, and I want to just get the rationale for the committee having such a lukewarm attitude to an audit report. The report is very clear. The, an audit, Mr. Speaker, serves to do an investigation, investigation of prudence, investigation of uh, misapplication, investigation of even things such as theft. The objectives of this social cash transfer, as indicated by my colleagues, are very clear. And the uh, headlines of them is the poverty reduction aspect. We have to interrogate the situation and find out whether we are making, meeting any milestones in terms of the objectivity of this particular program or not. It is meant to also reduce destitution. It is also meant to reduce delinquency, juvenile delinquency. I think the manner in which this program is run is delinquent itself. It is not fair for the committee to give us a business as usual kind of approach and simply say, for instance, as an example, on page five, we are told that the Auditor General's findings were that two million five and fifty three thousand eight hundred was paid to two thousand two hundred people who were ordinarily not supposed to be in the net. They were not beneficiaries. That's what the report is saying. So why is the committee taking a lukewarm approach? on a matter such as this one. They, they should have actually posed a few questions to make sure that this comes to a complete stop. Because we just came from one scandal on this same program, and now we're entering another scandal, where 2,258 individuals living warm bodies who are not supposed to be beneficiaries of this program have received the, the 70 quachas, Mr. Speaker, and the report goes on to say they did not only receive the 70 quachas for one month, it ranges between four months and 140 months. And this is the reason why the figure is colossal. Two million kwacha is a lot of money. It is a, a, by any standard to just be filtered through people, characters who ordinarily should not have been inside this program. And we are told by the report, Mr. Speaker, that the reason why there was this leakage is because there was a migration. Initially, when this social cash tra transfer program began many, many years ago, it was teachers who were involved in this uh, administration of social cash transfer. Now we are told these quacks. Quacks are community welfare assistant something, something, and also school leavers. Mr. Speaker, in the midst of this poverty, you give a school leaver money, an authority to enumerate, to register people who are supposed to qualify. And the, the main eligibility criteria, according to the report, is anybody above the age of 65 who's destitute, and also to that one who has a severe disability, who has been certified who has also been monitored for six months non-stop. Now, you should ask yourselves a question. How did this school leaver make a determination of re re recruiting these beneficiaries for six months? Who did, who did the, the work for that six months to monitor the people who were severely uh, disabled? There, I, I, I take it that there was no one. And so this program was just left to run on autopilot that you, you, you your youngsters have finished school now from five, come here, write your name, go in the community and register those who you find to be destitute. What are the measures of destitution? This report does not tell us anything about that. 
So, for people who are forthright, we should not even call it the inefficiencies of this program. We must call it a fraud. It is another fraud, in as far as I'm concerned, for one whole year, incompetent youngsters from grade 12 are put on a program that is managing colossal sums of money which is supposed to go and they benefit the very age, the permanently dis severely disabled, I beg your pardon, and people who program, um, program um, uh, objective is to lift them out of poverty. How do you do it? You simply cannot. And so we need to stop and think. And I'm encouraging the committees, such as this particular committee, not to treat these matters with kids' gloves. This was another theft, Mr. Speaker. Two million, and you give 2,000. It can never be an accident. 2,058 people wrongly. It is a, a, a scandal, in as far as I'm concerned. People just agreed to register their own relatives. That's my imagination. Okay? And, and then when the Auditor General goes... Because that's the Auditor General, by the way, Mr. Speaker, is one of the institutions we have in this country that is still doing a commendable job to bring out some of these flaws that are continuously making Zambia uh, poverty situation continue to be on the rise. This program should never be a failure. It should never, by any standard. You see what they did, uh, the, the government on your right-hand side. They moved this program, migrated it from teachers to Zampost. At some post, everyone knows the story, what happened. They, they, they basically embezzled the money, decided to buy motor vehicles, luxury things. That this PF government is very well known for, to go into luxury. Now, they move from one extreme end. Zampos is represented in almost all the districts. It was a good network that we were going to use. They now take it to school leavers. School leavers who have not, who, whose parents are poverty stricken themselves. How in the world do you expect a program like this to be successful? Because they first look at their tummies. They look at, I won't even go into the details of the quantum of 70,000 kwacha, which the committee spent a lot of time to deliberate that it's not enough. Yes, it's not enough, but it makes a, a, a whole lot of a difference. If it is administered correctly and the correct beneficiaries collect this money, it will make a huge difference, Mr. Speaker. This program, I think it should be understood by everyone. Uh, young and old, new and, and, uh, and also old, that a noble man may so rest in peace, Honorable Request Montanga from Kalomo, is the one who piloted this project from his own resource to begin with at his constituent's office. It proved that it can work. And then government adopted it. They then went and then did the pilot. They tried to spread their wings countrywide. And then what we, what we have is a disaster. Why has... The report not been uh, conclusive in terms of who, what did the audit report say? Who registered wrong people? Have these people been brought to book to understand why they misguided themselves? Was it for pecuniary benefit? Was it just a genuine error? Was it, you know, the business as usual? I take it that it is business as usual. Because there's been no punitive measures. We are told that the government does not even have the mechanism to go and claim money from those who benefited the money uh, in an undue manner. That's what the report is saying, that any attempt that they made to try and go and recover that money proved an exercise in futility. Why? It is because it was a scheme. And uh, I also read in the report what about, the, right? about uh, the desire of the committee to make sure that this program is government funded. And they say that because there is no sustainability if we continue to get funding from donors. I, I, I put it to you, committee, that this is a wrong approach. The donors will always find money as long as there is a prudent application of the money. If the money is not embezzled, the donors are going to continue to support us. If the money does not make corners in corridors in the dark, the, the, the donors will continue to to support this country, but if money is taken away in the manner that is being, they will not do it. And then they recommend that government should be the one to, to, to finance this whole project. Government has no money. It's not a secret that PF is broke. They, they, they put this country down on its knees. 
There is no money. Let's not even beat around the bush. There is no money for social cash transfer. There isn't. I debated the last time talking to the minister there, my, my, my niece, that you cannot even afford to smile and laugh while I'm reminding you that the treasury has given you no money for the ministry. And today they must say, the government must fund this money. How? When only 10% of the entire budget is for social programs. How? There's no magic abracadabra here. No. There isn't. 50% going to debt service. 40% going to paying uh, uh, recurrent expenditures, uh, uh, emolument, or vice versa. 10% left. You can't. You can't do it. It's a bad dream. It's like, uh, you know, dreaming. You cannot do it. We will need a serious government, a serious set of people who can come and make sure this program becomes correct. The current government we have on your right-hand side, they are far too short of the ability to do it because they've got their mouth in the wrong places, putting money in importing armored cars, Mr. Speaker. We saw them lining up these armored motor vehicles. For who? To suppress who? Tankers? Uh, okay, fine. I think it was a good idea to buy um, water bowsers because it's a civilized way of doing crowd control. But come on, why buy all these armored things for a small country that has never even been to war? Yeah. Tell me which war has Zambia fought for you to continue buying all those expensive things at the expense of programs such as this one? Somebody answer me. It is reckless. It is insensitive. There's no other definition. If the government is completely insensitive to go and start buying these vehicles, whether they are second hand or from Russia, wherever they procured from. When we come into government, Mr. Speaker, which we desire to do, we are going to sell those things. We don't need them. We do not need them in order to fund, to fund such programs. We have to fund programs that are going to lift the people's living standards and not to buy armored cars, to buy tear gas. We've debated this, our lungs out, about the issue of mi missed priorities by PF government. It's not necessary. All it does is it brings consternation. It brings a fear in people. Why, why buy? Why? We have lived for so long without all these armored vehicles that you have, you, have, you have procured. From which money? Where did the money come from? It is a clear case of misapplication of resource by your, the government on your right-hand side. No other definition. And no one can even stand up to... I want to hear one of them challenge me that it was necessity to buy those armored cars at colossal amounts of money. It was like a joke. Us complaining about fire tenders at two million kwacha, they went ahead because we are docile. As a people, we, we, we are failing to make the PFC sense in buying things that are valuable to us as a people. We, we, I blame myself because I've talked and talked and talked why buy ambulances for exorbitant amount of money when there are programs such as this? You want to go to the tail end of it? Because when these old, when these lame people are sick, that's when you need an ambulance. First try and cushion them. Try and cushion them so that they live a, 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 a next to decent life by getting them in a, in a, in a manner of giving them nutrition. This is what this program is serving to do. But instead, I mean, here we are. Like, you know, uh, we have all retired to the fact that PF is in government, therefore they can do whatever they want. Mr. Speaker, the act of application of money for the country into things such as what I've described is unnecessary. No wonder these programs cannot succeed. There's no other definition. No one can say anything from the top right up to the bottom. Even a small child of grade five does a sort of analysis to see where our strength is, our weaknesses is, our opportunities are. It is simple. But look, I don't even know. I, I, I blame myself so much because I don't remember approving this budget of importing these ex expensive armored vehicles, expensive presidential jet, expensive this, living lavishly. We cannot afford that. We simply can't. And that's why we need a serious government. They have a year to rebundle themselves into another group of serious people. And it's easy to do it. It is easy to do it. Let's engage 
as, a, as, as, as leaders of this country and argue. And, and if you had, for me, I, I'm even pinching myself. When did I see this budget line about these motor vehicles they've imported? Was it a donation? I've been arguing among my, between me and my soul. I've been, I've been fighting inside. I've, I'm not at peace. Because at the end of it all, someone will rise and say, it is Parliament who appropriated money to buy these things. I am sorry to the Zambian people. I'm very, personally, I apologize for being in this Parliament that approved money, if we ever did, to buy things that do not add value to our people. The downtrodden. This report, hey, you report, hey, this one, it, it, for me, it makes me sad, Honorable Chairman of the Committee. This is the report where you should have reminded the government because the committee system is the heart and soul of any parliament. This is where the correct recommendations must come from. To look at the entire picture, an audit report is easy to, to read and to see the flaws. This makes me very sad. It makes me extremely sad. And I don't know what language we can now begin to use for our friends on the right to, for once, try to understand the things that matter to us. The report went further when the second was, was talking, Mr. Speaker, and I was listening. And I even said to myself, mm, am I in the same country? Because he said the bag of milling is 130. It isn't. Here in Osaka, where there are industries and milling companies, it's 175. And it's in short, short supply. But the second I was saying, the mini meals, the casually, you know, the, the social cash transfer, 70, it's not even enough to buy a sack of mini meal, which is now going at 130. 130. In far flung areas, it's about 200 kwacha. Mr. Speaker, the truth of the matter, I heard the, uh, the, the what's his name, the deputy uh, whip arguing that. These people who have come to do business in compounds, shop rights, and including, there he comes, uh, and including ourselves, should you practice social corporate responsibility to contribute to the social cash transfer. What kind of thinking is that? Because for me, sir, every second call I get from my constituency and elsewhere, people are talking about MP, Niribe Unga, MP. So now, I must now. Uh, we have no mini meal. That is a normal story in this country today. If you go to my Airtel money account, I'm in debt. Old women who qualify for this program, manangu, meaning who sleep hungry, and yet they're buying armored vehicles. No, come on. Do a rent check. Do a rent check. Do a rent check and, and, and see that you are taking this country to the wrong place. You don't need those things. All we need is to harmonize ourselves. There are no enemies here. We, we just band ourselves into one. God was not, uh, uh, you know, uh, he was not uh, short-sighted short to put us all together. We are one country. There's no reason through you, Mr. Speaker, Minister of Defense, to buy all those vehicles. Those things you bought. There's no, there's no justification anywhere. You will not say, and those are the things that are going to eat you up. As a, as a government. Those are things that will bring you down because we are going to use those things effectively to the society so that they don't vote for you. This is where the bug stops. We will use all these reckless activities that you've been doing and unnecessary by elections that are induced, spending, gobbling a lot of money. All those monies that we are using in by elections, Mr. Speaker, could have been used into these social cash transfer programs to help the very age, the people who die every day. They die every day. Not only for lack of food, lack of nutrition, lack of anything, lack of hope. The Zambians have lost hope. They don't know if they will see the, 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 the light of day the next day because it's like a fight to survive. I want to thank the, the committee, however, for bringing out all these matters in a lukewarm manner. Next time, please call a spade a spade and not a big spoon. Call it a spade so that we can all be reminded what our responsibilities are. Mr. Speaker, thank you.